All right, I'm live. Hang on just a second. I'm sharing this to my Twitter, uh, and I will start my babble. Hopefully I actually get some people watching. I tagged a couple people that I would really like to interact with on this live video. I really, you know, I, I don't, you know, beginning this, I don't have any damn qualifications whatsoever. I'm a nobody. I'm a dude sitting in a group home receiving state funding and getting verbally mauled for it on occasion. So I'm not speaking from the point of an ivory tower. I'm speaking from the point of view of somebody on the spectrum who likes screens and who builds screens. What in the world? Sorry, I got some kind of a weird alert that turned out to be a delayed alert. Hang on, I'm posting this to Twitter. I need the link. All right. Well, but if that isn't JavaScript, what is? What in the world? I'm still. Was it an alert? No, it wasn't. Okay, nobody's watching, which really sucks, but whatever. <clears throat> a friend of mine, a friend of mine needed to let off some steam yesterday. She may or may not have taken the post down. Unbeknownst to many, I actually cared about what she was going through, even though I have said otherwise in general fashions. Granted, uh, we are going through a pandemic at the moment, and according to the neurotypicals, I'm supposed to be keeping a journal of what's going on, even though group home life kind of just chugs on as it were. The only thing that I've been doing as of late is teaching myself programming languages, but that aside, I have been reading, or were reading, back in 2015, massive amounts of articles about children and screen time. I mean, on one hand, yeah, parents should parent their children and stop making screens responsible for their parenting. But, I mean, here's the thing. If you're in a mixed neurology household, I know what happens. The neurodiverse individual gets all the limits put on them and the neurotypicals get to do whatever they want. And if someone wants to come at me with, with some... With a rebound on that, go ahead, because I'm live. I can type and I can talk at the same time. That's just the way of things. That's power dynamics. But I also disagree with the fact that kids are in screens all day. I, I don't buy that. Secondly, usually when neurodivergent people use screens, as you call them, they're actually trying to communicate. A lot of the time, these people are semi-verbal, or even non-verbal. And you know what? It's my generation that got rid of outside time because we were afraid of the scary people that drove around in cars offering kids candy. We're the ones that started the whole play date thing. We're the ones that started the thing with those dumb participation trophies. Which, by the way, I always wanted the big trophy. I didn't want the little stupid trophy. I wanted the big trophy. I, I still fought. I still com I still engaged in competition. And no, not because I'm male. Because I'm driven. There's a difference. Now back to the thing with screens. Anything and everything can become an addiction. You know, before the screens, it was World of Warcraft. Before World of Warcraft, it was 
console video games. Before console video games, it was arcades. Before arcades, it was comic books and slasher movies. The problem is, for a very long time, there had been a predominant idea based around the misunderstood concept of special interests that once I got involved with designing video games, I would never want to do anything else. For example. That's not freaking true. Now, I have a question for everyone listening. Why is it you think that today's kids engage with their screens and with people on the internet more than they engage with you? And I do not think it's just because you're an uncool boomer. I think that a lot of people have ingested a lot of that pop psychology bullshit that I was surrounded with as a child. And while I accept that a vast majority of people may not, for example, be interested in things like video games, recording music, or doing graphic design or making websites, I needed to find an outlet to be allowed to talk about those things with people that I could trust. Now, unfortunately for a lot of you, and I know that my friend count is dropping, I'm not as dumb as I look. I do believe in freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And I'm not talking about freedom from social consequences. And by the way, social consequences are one of the biggest bullshit constructs since the thing they were probably inspired by. Shunning. Okay, the social consequences horseshit was inspired by shunning people in the medieval era. The Jehovah's Witnesses to this day carry on that ridiculous tradition. So, uh, kids, I have a question for you first off. I am somebody who works with people like you. I am somebody like you. I'm an adult on the spectrum. And I, I notice that you really like the videos you watch on YouTube and the games that you play and the streamers that you watch. And you probably engage with. I bet a number of you can engage with them. I have a question for you. What are your parents not giving to you emotionally, psychologically, mentally, you know, behaviorally? What are you getting from that screen that you're not getting from mom or dad or, you know, partner one, partner two, partner three, and so on? Because I can communicate with them. I can build a bridge, a metaphorical bridge between you and your parents. So uh, in the comments section, if you're able to and old enough, can you please type to me what it is that you get out of engaging with those things? Because I know you're not doing all these things to be malicious to your parents, meaning I know you're not doing those things to be bad. You're doing those things because you like to do those things. And even though your parents do deserve the bulk of your attention, or a lot of your attention, I also think that everything should be a two-way street. I also think that as much as you give in social skills that you're probably taught, you should get back in what you consider is gainful and meaningful engagement. Meaning sometimes mom and dad need to, need to kneel down and get to your level with things. Maybe sometimes they need to engage you about Sesame Street, Roblox, Fortnite, Five Nights at Freddy's, Halo. As much as they want you to engage on how your day is and all that other boring nonsense. My advice to you about that is just tell them you're fine. Tell them you're fine. And parents, please respect their answer. Please respect their answer. Don't pry.
Now, parents, you're worried about your kids disappearing into screen land and never coming out again and missing out on the things that you, at their age, called viable part of, parts of life and that people with letters after their names and with doctoral degrees and doctor of medicine degrees and doctor of psycho psychiatry degrees all agree are good for your kids beyond eating vegetables and saying your pleases and thank yous. And those of you who have autistic kids, and I'm not sure if they're still doing this, you're probably told to limit exposure to special interests. I disagree with that because I was put through, I was put through it 24-7 for about 19 years of my life. It did me no good. It did me no good to be continuously told. It did me no good. Hello, Shannon. How are you doing? It did me no good to be continuously told that the rest of the world was not interested in the fact that I, as a 16-year-old, could teach myself the basics of HTML and later cascading style sheets or CSS. It did me no good to learn, even though I knew it was true, that the rest of my peer group didn't give two shits or shakes of a hare's tail, that I was not able, that, that I was able to teach myself how to program a simple game in my spare time. And as an aside, let me give you a bit of an aside here. Let me ask you, let me tell you something. You want to know why I didn't have very much homework? Because I did most of it in study hall and in a bus. Hang on, Shannon, saying something. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I, I hope you're doing well. I hope we. I also hope we get a chance to chat at some point. But I know you're busy and probably at work. So I'm glad to hear from you. You know, but adults, you know, parents. I know you want to engage with your kids. I know you want your kids to meet you halfway. But there's a way to do it, and it is not yelling at them about the time they spend on their screens. And it is not pretending you're not interested in what they like. That needs to stay in the mid-90s where it came out of, along with those ridiculous autism diets. Don't even get me started on that nonsense. So parents, my question to you is, after that bit of a tirade, of course, what do you think that your kids are getting out of spending a lot of time tethered to either their phones or other devices? That you don't have the balls, that you don't have the balls to give them, to give to them as their parents. What is it? Why didn't you ask them? Why are you so afraid? I mean, if Shannon over here was to ask me what I liked about designing video games, I could tell her. Or why I picked a specific style of art to do as an artist, I could tell her. You as parents are their first teachers. Don't forget that. And yes, screens may be an issue. I understand that. The other thing I'm worried about is that kind of that kind of ethos trickling into my living situation, even though I don't mind debating certain people whose name starts with a B, who works for the county, or even members of my own team. So what really needs to happen is both of you need to start communicating with each other. And sometimes, parents, sometimes you have to put away your inner ABA therapist. Sometimes you have to kneel down and get to their level. Sometimes you have to communicate with them using their methodology of communication and their metaphors. If they like Thomas the Tank Engine, use Thomas the Tank Engine. If they like Disney, use Disney. Use it to open the door to their inner world. 
that is small on the outside but big on the inside. Stop thinking about it and framing it in the idea that you're bringing them out of something. They already know they're a part of the bigger world. They just, they just now experienced a neurological, a neurological building process, neurons connecting to axions, when they saw things on a TV screen. They're relating to these characters for some reason that they, only they know. Use the metaphor, use the allegory. I mean, shit, even with me. Use Spyro. Other people don't always have to win. Other people don't always have to be made to be to feel comfortable and placated just so that people like myself look like we can blend in with society. Because I'll tell you one thing, using Doctor Who language, sometimes my chameleon circuit doesn't always work. Sometimes my chameleon circuit doesn't always work. Sometimes... I, I'm not willing to access my abstraction layer to to speak neurotypical. The only reason I do it in in the presence of a job is to hold a job. Unfortunately, for five to nine hours, it's what one has to do. And I know that I tagged Wendy in this video, so a shout out to Wendy, also known as the Wendy. And know that I am, in my own way, even if it's a bit ranty, paving the way for your dear Tony and your dear Dury. And I hope they're doing well. Yeah, Gahan is even cheering me on right now. <laughs> the idea of fitting in for a quick sociological, anthropological derail came about because a long time ago we lived in tribal societies where you had to fit in or the other tribe was going to come and get you. We don't live in a society like that anymore. But our brains, parts of our brains, the lower parts of our brains, the mammalian and the reptilian brain, don't actually know that, funny as it is. And thanks for the shout out, Gahana. Yes, I have my Spyro plushie. You're supposed to hug it and it's supposed to do something, but it doesn't. So yeah, basically, for those of you who haven't seen yet, or haven't made it yet, I have a question for both parties. The parents, you know, to the parents I say, what do you believe that your kids are getting out of immersing themselves in screens the way that they do? Which is not the way that I do, which is why I had a bit of a disconnect. And for the kids, what are you... What are you satisfying or getting out of the things you absorb on your screen? Because I'm not completely and solely just agreeing with the parents in the psychological community, although I do know some really good social workers. Shout out to Amber, Melinda, and others. But the social workers have raised this as a concern, which I believe it is too, but I, I don't agree with the methodology. And to both of to both parties, I came to this conclusion when I actually shut my uh, emotional side off, and I did as Miss Kichi always told me. I did a connection, which is basically just a fancy way of meditating. A connection, connecting this lobe to that lobe, and then saying something over and over again, like kind of like a mantra. I wonder where Justine is, by the way. <laughs> But yeah, that's what I wanted to blab about. I'm sure Gahan is getting some 2007-2008 flashbacks because this is what I used to do on YouTube. I really miss YouTube's quick capture videos because I made so many friends through that. Hey, Gahana, does this remind you of a 2007-2008 video? You know, is this kind of a blast from the past? <laughs> yeah, as another, as another aside, this is how I used to do videos before there was live streams. Uh, 
Because I used to, there used to be people, parents of autistic kids, and the autistic kids jacking the cameras! They'd steal the cameras! You know, some people thought that parents were uh, non-consensually filming their kids, but I think the kids were sometimes stealing the cameras. What does Gahana have to say about that? You think the kids were stealing the cameras sometimes? Looks like I got a resounding yes! I mean, my friend Monica, I think I tagged her in this. She knows that I used to jack the camera. So, yeah, anyway, that's, I mean, this is me trying to solve a problem because I do see both sides of the, actually all sides. Both sides is actually duality, right, Kahana? Both sides of a problem is a statement of duality when we know that it's actually indimensional, that even our troubles are multidimensional, they're non-Euclidean. I've always thought that. Why do you think I'm such a good, good at solving problems? <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna jump off, drink more coffee, hug Spyro. I don't know. Talk to you all later. Oh, and please download this if you like. I give you my permission. I'm actually gonna upload it to YouTube. I'm out.